Hey guys, how's it going? Today we're going to check out um, Game Maker Studio 2. It was just released not too long ago. Um, and it is the sequel to obviously Game Maker Studio 1, but quite a longer line of Game Maker Studios. Um, I actually used Game Maker Studio 6 when I was in high school, so um, they've obviously come a long way since then and have incorporated a lot of. Um, new features and um, I want to kind of show you them so uh, let's go ahead and get started with this tutorial I think I'm going to show you a space shooter top-down shooter kind of tutorial to get you started with the basics and I'm going to show you the two types of game styles or I guess game um, functions to use to do so we're going to make one version with the regular built-in functions and then we're going to use another version with box 2d which enables physics across the world uh, pre-made physics versus creating our own physics um, otherwise so uh, it should be interesting and um, I don't see too many tutorials covering the box 2d physics side of things so it should make uh, for an interesting series so let's go ahead and start with this this is a beginner's tutorial to game maker studio 2 so when we open it up we go ahead and click on new to get started <coughs> let's go ahead and choose a drag and drop interface it doesn't really matter what you choose i'm not sure why it switches both because you can honestly choose um between the two and switch back and forth regardless but we'll go ahead and do the drag and drop and let's name this shooter tutorial one because i'm gonna do a lot of these <laughs> great so this is our new workspace on the right side we have our resources here just like uh, you would see normally on the left side of Game Maker Studio 1 and um, uh, the first thing we want to do is go ahead and create something so what do we have to create we have our rooms here we have our options configurations we can create sprites style set sounds paths scripts shaders fonts timelines and objects um, notes included files and extensions so um, basically this is all you really need to know there's there's this right here that kind of shows you um, the debug information about game maker or about your game but for the most part you're gonna be working in this space right here so let's hide that because the more space the better and let's go ahead and create um, a sprite to start so let's um, right click on this sprite and go to create and we'll go ahead and import something and I've gone ahead and downloaded this. I downloaded the Space Shooter Redux package from Kenny.nl. That's K-E-N-N-E-Y.nl, and he offers free assets. I um, would like, I encourage all of you to check him out and um, check his site out and his assets out. And um, uh, they're just great for prototyping because they have so many so many options. So we can go to um, back to the sprite. We go to import. And let's go to our desktop where I downloaded it, and we'll see Space Shooter Redux. Let's go to PNG and let's choose a ship. Let's go ahead and choose this guy. Open. Yes. And now we have our sprite. Now the cool thing about the sprite editor, um, well not the sprite editor, but just the sprite object editor feature thing here, um, is you can choose the collision masks and choose how they're handled. So it's, you can choose automatic but you can also choose an eclipse you can choose a diamond uh, precise which is really great if you want um, a physics based game like like I'm going to set up in the next tutorial and precise per frame which is very slow so let's go ahead and just choose precise uh, just because we want to be precise on the player uh, let's uh, leave all this the same and turn off the preview mask and here we can see um, we can set our point of origin. So the we don't really want it in the top corner because then every time we create an object like a bullet, it's going to be in the top left corner. So we want it to show up right in the center, which we can drag it over here, obviously. Choose the origin points here manually, or just choose uh, middle center here, and that'll choose it for us. So then we can either close this or to show you a feature of the workspace, I can actually um, create a new object and leave that open. And you'll see that it dropped down here. So now I have this open and I have my new object. 
So we're going to name this object obj underscore uh, player. And let's actually go up and rename our sprite too. We forgot to do that. So let's rename it spr for sprite. And this is just to stay organized because when we're coding um, later on or when we're even calling options, we want to be able to tell the difference between the player sprite and the player object and the player sound. And the player. It's just really good to um, prefix them with what they are. So uh, sprite player. And let's go and scroll back down to our events. So now we have an object and um, it doesn't have to do anything right now. We have our events here. Um, and that's about it. So we'll change the sprite to the one we created, which we now have a nice um, browser here, which we can click object sprite. And we're going to leave this just like this for now because I want to show you um, in the main options here. We can actually change our frames per second. And this was normally done in the rooms in Game Maker Studio, but now it's done on a per game basis, um, so or it can be done on a per game basis. So we're going to go ahead and change this to 60 frames a second just to make everything look smooth. And you're going to want to do this early on in your game, choose the frame rate, rate that you want to target, because if you do it later on, then the speed that everything is being drawn is going to be faster or slower based on what you changed it to. So you're going to have to change pretty much all of your speeds and all of your um, forces within the game to adjust to the new frame rate. So let's set that now to 60 and hit OK or hit Apply. And let's open up a room. So now we have a room. We can zoom out using these here. We have our layers on the left side, which we have our background layers, which we can have multiple background layers, and these are just art. Um, and we also have our instances layers, which actually interact with each other. Um, below here we have our room settings, and this is where um, they hide room physics, which enables box 2D physics. But we will leave that unchecked for now because our regular features won't work um, if we set that up that way. So now we have our width and our height. Let's go ahead and set that up to 1920 by 1080, which is uh, full HD. We'll zoom out a little bit more. We can grab our object player, drag him right to the center, a drag and drop in our face, and we have our first game. Um, we don't have movement in yet. I'll add that in the second tutorial because this one um, pushed out a little further than I thought. But um, if we hit play here, we'll see the game load up, and we'll see our object player. Perfect. It loaded up, and there's our player. So in the next tutorial, I'll show you movement and how to add parallax backgrounds to kind of spice up the visuals of your game um, and obviously add movement. So thanks for watching. Have a good day. Peace.